Sun's coming up now and hopefully the mist is clearing. This is, or was at least, the Hobby Zone Super Cub. I say was because it's fairly heavily modified now. It still has the Super Cub fuselage and tail section. But really that's almost all that's left of the original Super Club in a way. It's the, the original Super Cub was only two channel, three channel. Three, um, you know, it had elevators and rudder. There were no ailerons. It had a dihedral wing. It had a big propeller, but with a, yeah, a brushless, a brushed motor and not a lot of power. Well, fairly, it was a lot larger than it, but turned slower. Um, I've mucked around with this in stages quite a lot. I, I put a, a wing in, a flat wing with a spar with no dihedral and, um, uh, and put uh, ailerons in and um, and then I changed the power system I put a, a, a brushless motor in and a, a smaller propeller but turning faster I changed the wheels those are beaver wheels ah, because I've got quite a bit of lead as you can see this is all lead weight that's quite a lot of lead on the front Basically because the brushless motor I put in is a lot lighter than the old brushed power system So that's mainly just to keep the center of gravity where it was to compensate for the uh, Change in the weight of the power system. Anyway, let's see if I can turn on the camera here And then see if we can start video if I can get at the motor the button Hmm. Hmm. Famous last words. Hmm. Oh, it's in picture mode. I always forget that. You've got to change it to video mode first, and then press that to get it to record video. Now it's recording video. The first couple of presses will have just have taken pictures. Why the heck they default the thing to picture mode, I don't know, since I would have thought the vast majority of people want to use it for video. Uh, you know, I bet there's about one person in a hundred actually just wants to use it for taking pictures. So why they default it to the mode that hardly anyone's going to use, who knows? Anyway, it's now recording video. Uh, right, oh, that's high. Low rate. Right, left, up, down. I seem to have, it's a while since I programmed this. Throttle cut off. I seem to have a bit of elevator. It seems like I've got up elevator mixed in with the uh, the ailerons. I'm sure I had a good reason for that, so I think I'm going to leave it alone. Um, one problem I know I've had with this is I could never land the thing without tipping it over. I may have made the nose a little heavier, that may be partially. If I did try to bend the, the other, because the other problem is every time you do it, the undercarriage tends to get bent backwards because it's just little pieces of wire. Now that is the original wire. <laughs> Not the original wheels, but it's the original wire. Anyway, I tried to bend the undercarriage forward in the vague hope that might help to stop the thing tipping over. It's not, it's usually not a problem tipping over on takeoff, it's a problem tipping over on landing. I can't land the thing without it tipping over. Anyway, um, I, uh, the original receiver oh, was actually some sort of really weird thing, if you remember these Super Cubs when they came out, because they come from quite a while ago. It had some sort of strange system integrated that was supposed to have a light sensor and keep it the right way up by sensing the light or something. I don't think it ever worked very well. Anyway, that's gone. That's no longer in it at all, obviously, because I'm running it. That was for brush, and I'm running a brushless system now. It's got a little lemon, my standard little lemon six-channel DSMX receiver in it now. Okay, let's see what we can do. Throttle cut off. Why it wanders around on the ground like that, I don't know. That wasn't rudder I was giving it. I don't know why it wanted to wander in a circle on the ground like that. Maybe one of the wheels wasn't turning properly or something. Doesn't seem feel as if it's got oodles of power, particularly, given that it's got a brushless system. I remember also I did, I haven't, again, I haven't flown it this year, this is the first time this year. 
I was a little concerned as to whether uh, got enough power to loop, although not massive authority in those rates. Mid rate. Time remaining. Six minutes. Yeah, it's got a big battery. Now that's another thing which increases the weight. I didn't feel the original little 1300 milliamp hour batteries that it, it used were going to really work with this brushless system. They, well, they didn't really have enough capacity. So I opened up the battery bay, had my worst ex personal accident with that cut my hand trying to open it with a knife. It slipped and I had to go to the hospital and get stitches. <sighs> Just cutting the bottom out of that battery bay. I wasn't careful enough to make sure that I didn't have my fingers anywhere the knife could get at them. The knife slipped somewhere I wasn't expecting it to go. But I cut the bottom out of the battery bay so that I can put a 2200 in more or less vertically. I'm just pushing it up through that battery bay so it's standing in the middle of the plane, almost at the centre of gravity, so it doesn't really affect the centre of gravity particularly, but it's standing pretty much vertically at the centre of gravity at 2200 milliamp hour, which gives it plenty of, cap plenty of capacity because this is... This is um, not, a, I don't remember the, what the motor is, to be honest, without taking the cowling off anymore. But it's not a very big motor. It's not a particularly large motor. Um, so it's not using massive amounts of power. So a 2200, it's, you know, it's a smaller plane, it's not what you'd call really a full-size plane, it's a little bit bigger than a micro, but it's a bit bigger than a micro, but uh, yeah, I don't even know what I was doing there. I sort of was thinking of doing something and then kind of changed my mind, to be honest. I don't know. It feel, uh, to be honest, it still feels underpowered to me. It still feels underpowered to me. I mean, well, it depends what for. Maybe not for a scale cub. Probably not. A scale cub, a cl the cub is not meant to be particularly an aerobatic plane. So for a scale cub, it's probably not underpowered. But, you know, relative to what you normally more often do with RC planes, it's a bit on the underpowered side still. Now, uh, Don has got a, uh, he's got like an apprentice motor in here. It's a 15 size motor. So, I mean, now he did, and he's got that bolted through so that it's connected right into the fuselage. So he'd have to rip the nose off to come off. But, uh, you know, that's, now that's overpowered. That's a massive amount of power for something this size, a 15 size motor. I don't remember what size this is, to be honest. I do not recall. But it's obviously a lot smaller than that, and possibly a little, small, little bit smaller than it should be. It's enough to fly the plane fairly comfortably, but not enough to make it, mm, you know, a terribly lively performer. Anyway, let's bring it into land now. Let's bring it into land. Didn't put flaps. I put ailerons on it. I didn't put flaps on it. Now, it's a bit of a bugger, as I say, to land. Well, at least I've generally found it so. Oh, Ooh, better. I still tipped over, though. <laughs> it was better, but it still tipped over. <laughs> I thought we were going to get away with it there. It seemed to be running over the grass fairly nicely, but it still tipped over. I've tipped it over, I think, every time since I've landed the blithering thing. Maybe not in its original... No, I don't think, don't think I used to tip it over in its original configuration with the original power system probably because of different, slightly different weight distribution. But uh, I, every blithering time I've landed it, since I changed the power system, I've tipped it over, I think. And I really thought we were going to get away with it that time. It looked as if it touched down quite nicely. Maybe I didn't keep off elevator on, and maybe if I'd kept up a full up elevator on a little bit more after, after it touched the ground, I may have let go of the elevator. Uh, 
which might have let the tail come up. Who knows? It's possible. Of course, this doesn't have any kind of stabilization. This is just a straight lemon receiver in it with nothing fancy. That, that is where the old light detector used to go for the original system. Don't think anybody liked that much. Of course, it got totally confused if you try and flew it over snow, because sometimes the snow would be brighter than the sky, so then it would try and turn itself upside down. Because it would try and, it was designed to try and turn itself so that, oh, I've got the camera on, of course, so that sensor faced the light. Okay, um, oops. Little complicated here. I need to stop the video camera recording, the onboard camera. And I will need a screwdriver to get at that. There we go. That should be off now. <sighs> Not a bad little flyer, but in retrospect, I probably should have put a bigger power system on it. It probably was partially to do with what I had. Oh, I think I can see that. I can tell it's a 1400 kV. It's one of those A2212s. It's a 1400 kV motor. And what's that propeller? An 8x4. It's an 8x4 propeller. It's an 8x4 propeller on a... Uh, what did I just say? God, my brain. On a 1400 kV motor. And it's enough to fly it quite comfortably, but not enough to give it enough power to be what you'd call really a lively performer. Oh well. I don't know whether I'll get round to modifying it again, though. I mean, whether I want to start trying to upgrade the power system more. Almost certainly not this year, as it's getting well into the fall anyway now. And let's just see how the battery did. Um, there's one of these Gen Zace 2200 milliamp hours. Uh, now, I didn't have flight for as much as I've got. I had seven minutes on, but I actually only flew it for five minutes, so. 11.6, 3.86. So, you know, that's probably about reasonable. Um, I could have flown it for a couple minutes more without any danger of seriously flattening the battery. At least certainly a minute more. Maybe two minutes more would have been a little bit optimistic, but uh, we definitely could have flown it for another minute anyway uh, uh, on, that, uh, on that battery.